Hello there, this is Toby and welcome back to the LLVM tutorial walkthrough. <clears throat> uh, we are at the uh, end of the first half of chapter 5 where uh, we are attempting, we have attempted to uh, implement if statements in the language. Um, the next section is going to be the for loop. But uh, before we go into the next section, we we need to uh, get our program working first. So I, I, I dutifully follow the instructions to um, to build out the parser, the lexer, the parser, and the code generator for if statements. But we it doesn't seem to be working. So I'm gonna do some debugging during this section. Um, so. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I think, is try to, because my first suspicion is that the parser is not working. So I'm just gonna do some printout, I believe. <clears throat> so let's say I'll print some stuff to the console. I will print out the fact that the par this parse if expr function is start it um, let's see I will say parse can failed um, otherwise I will say parse can success and uh, if we didn't get a uh, expected, then it should or this log error should already uh, print expected. Then here we'll say parse then parse then success only comes here. If we didn't get a then, then we'll say parse then failed. And then here we're gonna parse the else part. We'll do this the same printout pattern again. Parse else success and then parse the whole thing. Parse if expert success. Okay, let's recompile this. <coughs> and hopefully we'll get some more visibility into the parser, whether it parsed the if statement correctly or not. I guess one thing I could do is run their version and come up with a simple test case that works in their version. And then I can use that same test case to test my version. Okay, my program compiled. Ignore all the warnings. <laughs> so if one, then two, else three. Does that work? Evaluate it to two. If zero, then two, else three. Well, it's three. No, that looks good. All right, let me try to do that in my version. That was their version. Their version works. <laughs> Mm. The parser succeeded. So maybe the problem isn't the parser, but the problem might be with the um, code generator. So I'm gonna maybe do, do the same kind of um, logging in the code generator. Mm. Oh, let me think. Maybe the problem is that we don't have this switch statement for if statement. Could that be why? I'm gonna look at their main loop. No, we don't need one. Mm, okay. All right. Let me let me go to the code gen code 
the code gen code for this if statement. Uh, see if it succeeded in generating the LLVM code. It would. Hmm. Maybe I do a step debugger. That's also possible. Instead of. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do a step debugger. Uh, does that work? Yeah, let's do the step debugger. So I'm going to do LLDB, which is the LL debugger, LLVM's debugger. <coughs> Very good debugger. I, I use it even when I'm not using when I'm not doing LLVM related projects, I, I use the LLDB. Um, let's see. So I'm going to set a breakpoint at line 345. So it's a B my lang dot CC 345. I'm going to run that. Okay, I'm gonna write a if statement. If one, then two, else three. It paused there. Great. I'm gonna go into GUI mode. Oh man, what just happened? Why are the border written <laughs> with X's and Q's? This makes no sense. Okay, I'm just gonna try to step through this. Oh, it couldn't even parse the condition. Oh, we didn't, no? I mean, not parse, sorry. This is not the parser. This is the code gen. It couldn't even code gen the condition and return the null pointer. Why would that be? Um, so let me look at what the code what the condition was that might be difficult it's a value of one looks right there's a number extra a S T it should have code gendered in constant. Gonna look at their version of this code. They have this override. Maybe it's important to have this override thing because I don't have that. I'm gonna try this, see if that fixes the problem. It's really bizarre that the border are drawn with <laughs> the letters. I don't know why that happened, but let me recompile my program. And I will redo the same exact test with the debugger. See if then it'll actually give me a uh, the code chain for the number expression will give me a constant value back instead of a no pointer it is quite strange that this problem has not surfaced before until now not sure why okay i'm gonna set the Break point. Um, is it in the same place anymore? If expr ast colon colon code gen three forty five. Yes, still three forty five. 
um, let's run it. I'm gonna type if one, then two, else three. Go into GUI mode, it's still weird. Actually, I'm gonna step in. Oh, shoot. That should have been a not. We did get a value back. This override, I don't think matters. I just didn't have this <laughs> not <laughs> condition. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, you make mistakes and that's how you learn, folks. Yes, I, I for some reason, when I was copying this code, I didn't put this exclamation point there. And uh, that's why things are not working, you know. Okay. To, co uh, to code, uh, to quote one of my friends, Rachel, uh, her saying is, uh, if something seems too hard, it's probably something stupid. And in this case, it was, that was something stupid indeed. <clears throat> that doesn't mean the person who wrote the code is stupid though. Stupid just means it was a elementary mistake. Okay, Let's see if it works now. If one, then two, else three. Yes! <laughs> if statements work now. So um, I can do something like. Uh, good or. <laughs> I've defined a function called okay. <laughs> If x is greater than 10, then okay. Oh, I, I don't have, I don't have strings in this language. Then one, else zero. So now, if I, wait. Oh, invalid binary operator. We don't, we don't have greater than sign yet. Of course. So if x is less than five how about that then one else zero so okay of 10 gives us zero okay of four gives us one so we have if statements implemented now great okay uh well thank you for watching this debugging session um i'm trying to think is there anything else left to say about if statements and five functions. Um, I guess I, I'll just say one more thing about, uh, yeah, the five function and the weirdness of the five function. Um, so before earlier in, in uh, two episodes ago, we gave this example of, um, like if you have an arbitrary program with mutable variables, such as in the case of this X, we assign values to it twice. So it's a mutable variable. Uh, y as well, we have this branch that assigns to it and this branch also assigns to it. When we convert this program with mutable variables in it into SSH form, then we have to do this stuff and that requires a five function. I want to put uh, what we've done into this same context. So, um, let me make another file, call it untitled2. Um, so the reason that having to do this five function, it was not quite as onerous 
as in the general case. For the if expression implementation that we did for the kaleidoscope language is the following. Um, in the kaleidoscope language, um, the kaleidoscope language, well, currently, first of all, currently does not have mutable variables. So if, if, if in kaleidoscope you do something like, you know, what I did, I think you can do like fx then 1 else 0, something like this. Um, th this is an if statement in kaleidoscope and if if statements in kaleidoscope are not if are not like if statements in JavaScript or C if statements in kaleidoscope uh, are are expressions as in this if statement is an expression um, that give you either a one or a zero right depending on the branching it gives you a one or a zero which means that in a sense it's like there's a, this temporary value that like you can assign this assign the value of the if statement well currently you can't because currently you we don't have variable assignment yet in kaleidoscope that's coming in an upcoming chapter but not yet but um but conceptually, it's like, yeah, it's, an if statement yields a value, whereas the if statement in conventional programming languages like JavaScript do not. Uh, and because, of, because in Kaleidoscope, an if statement yields a value, and therefore it has to yield either, like in, in one branch, it yields a certain value, in another branch, it yields a certain value. It lends itself to be able, for us to be able to easily generate this five function because in essence it's basically saying let's say the output value of the if statement was y then we're saying y1 is 1 oh, y, I meant to say y1 so let's write this in SSA form right we have an x Let's call it x1. If x1, then y1 is equal to 1, and y2 is equal to 0. And then we're going to need a y3 at the end to return from the function. What is y3? Well, y3 is going to be what the phi of y1 and y3. How do I write phi? There it is y3 is going to be the phi of y1 and y2 as in well if it came from this branch it's going to give you y1 if it came from this branch it's going to give you y2 so we, we can always construct this uh, situation in the simplified environment of or, or, or in the simple simple construct of the if expressions in this language uh, but that's not going to be the case if you want to support a an if statement in a conventional language like JavaScript or C because they do not have this property. In a C or JavaScript, you can basically do, uh, you know, you can you can do arbitrary assignments within within the um, within either block of the if statement and if you had that stuff you you're gonna need a phi function for w you're gonna need a phi function for z and so forth so so that problem will be much harder uh, if we had to support that but we don't for the kaleidoscope language and that's the shortcut that we took okay all right, I'm going to stop this episode here. Uh, in the next episode, we're going to go into the for loop and see how we implement that.